And we're live. And we are live. And this is episode 20. Mm-hmm. Episode so, 20! What's Sorry. going on? How are, how's everyone feeling? <laughs> we have 100 people on this. Imagine episode 20, there's 100 people all of a sudden on the, on the, on the stream. Maybe sometime we'll have a room. It's not even a stream. It won't be a stream, it'll be like a room. Yeah. People just jump in and tune in tune to in. whatever wave is currently going on. That would be cool. I feel like that would be a moderating nightmare, but that would be totally. really cool. Yeah. That's the thing that happens when you have so many people, you have to, you need, there's a hot, the more people you have, the higher probability that you're going to need an organizational structure to keep things running properly. What do you, do you, is that a, do you think that makes sense? Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Like uh, if you're two people, you don't need anyone to be saying, you know. You don't need a mo moderator. Well, yeah. except if you're Jordan Peterson and Slavoj Žižek, maybe you do need a mo moderator. If you, if that's, that's the conversation. I don't having. remember it. I, so complex. <laughs> I don't remember anything I mean, about that. <laughs> well, I'm saying it, there's some, <laughs> some uh, situations when even if it's two people, you need a very reasonable and capable moderator okay i see what you're saying yeah yes yeah someone to pull if people are on different wavelengths you need someone to try to make the waves somewhat be on the same uh same length have the waves be on the same length you know what mm, i mean yeah yeah and maybe return to uh wave if it wasn't thoroughly explored right because mm -hmm. sometimes sure. we don't notice like i, I yep. i'm sure that's happened to us like we're exploring a wave that has a lot of potential and something just leads you to another thing that is mm -hmm. mildly related or maybe not at all related but um you can't help but switch curiosity and yeah. explore explore that thing and then you didn't even notice and you just missed out on on a lot of potential that was going on for the previous wave yeah it's i believe it's the term is wave jumping wave hopping wave jumping that's if, it wave if hopping you're, if you're wave hopping <laughs> too much the then the wave never fully develops you know yeah that's the whole thing about um being able to sit down for an hour or even more mm -hmm. and um have some time to run through things that's right to explore things that are not quite obvious that are details that are in the shadows sure it's um and on this i mean everyone knows on this podcast we like to talk about the surfing lifestyle a lot we're really big surfers mm -hmm. we're big wave surfers um <laughs> and uh yeah when, that's uh, like that's a high risk almost athletic achievement yeah and it's i mean it's well known that, that <laughs> both of us have experience in big wave surfing but yeah, the thing which is pretty pretty uncommon, I must say. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. The thing about big wave surfing is, if you you know you you need quite a lot of speed to get up to the wave because it takes so long to develop. It's it's kind of uh, a lot of the time you need to be pulled in by um, right by a jet ski. Usually, uh, yeah. Really jet big wave friend. Really big wave surfers like us. You need to have a rope. And uh, yep. almost like wakeboarding. And the person, the person driving the jet ski needs to have a very high expertise on wave reading. And yep. uh, yes, yeah, uh, yeah. And that's a that's a big part of being able to you know catch the right big wave. Correct. And you if know, you are assistance, if you're so so, imagine okay, the wave reader. He's he's reading the waves. He's feeling it. He's tuning in. He's on the jet ski. Um, and yeah, uh, he has a higher perspective on things. That's right. And he, he's, he's kind of tuning in to the waves. And sometimes, sometimes, I mean, this happens a lot. Sometimes you're, you might want to ask a question and they'll be um, totally like almost in a trance. And this has been well documented among yeah. our big wave surfing friends. Totally. Um, yeah, that's a well-known thing. And, for sure. and, but the thing is when they catch, you know, they'll feel it and they'll start going. And if you are building up the wave and you're feeling it underneath you and you're riding along with it and you're ready to catch the wave 
if you get mm-hmm. distracted by a wave behind you or thinking about another wave, you might mess up the opportunity to fully catch that big wave and experience the whole um, what the wave has to offer. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I think this is something that many wave surfers, especially big wave surfers, they yes. would agree on is that there's nothing many of our friends like that feeling uh, when you surfed when when you got through the whole wave right and then you're mm-hmm. you're on a on a peaceful part of the ocean oh man uh, but you need to get away fast from that peaceful place because the the wave that's coming behind yes. might get to you right oh, yeah. so even if you get to an to to the end of a wave and you experience that beautiful feeling of achievement of you know riding the whole wave oh, all the man. way to to its completion isn't it amazing you still need to you still need to st- to to keep an eye on the next wave yeah right you so do and it's hard i mean that in, even, that, yeah. in that in that moment it's i mean it's almost impossible to express you know people who may not have i mean it's 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 a crazy thing to venture into big wave surfing and you know it's yeah It's, it's just, dangerous, so I I wouldn't uh, you know recommend it just to anybody. Yeah. It's not for the faint of heart. But you that know? feeling, it's not for the that weak-minded. Fe- it's not. But that feeling that you get. I mean, is there anything better than that? F- get it, few you things know, in life. There's few things in life, you know? but even in that moment, you know, you feel you've just experienced the whole wave. You know, you've yeah. You you pull off out the side, off the back. And there's a moment, that moment of calm. I mean, it's really hard for me to describe it into words. It's just, you know, when you've experienced so many times, you just get a sense for it, and it's hard to um, really articulate. But you're right. If you don't, yeah, there's there's no words actually. There's no uh, words. If you if you come up with any word to reference that feeling, it's not gonna come close anywhere close. And you know, th- thrill seekers have been looking for this experience uh, for yeah thousands of years and it's really in the ocean where where you can find it you can find that wholeness of flow because you know yeah. our, our bodies are more than 90 water and so there's this connection there's a sacred connection with the ocean sure and um, the deepness of the ocean which is um you know something we don't we don't think about you know like yeah. we only think about we're floating in the in the surface and we're surfing in the surface mm-hmm. but um You know, there's so many things beneath what's there going are. on in surface. And, and you know that's deep. It's really, really deep down there. It is. That's one thing that that's one thing that everyone can agree on about the ocean is it's quite deep. Um, yep. I think that something to think of that I'm thinking about right now, currently, that I'm thinking about uh, in the current time, uh, mm-hmm. is that waves can be generated from many different places in the ocean. There could be a surface level ripple caused by, say, wind or a storm, but there could also be a very deep ocean volcanic eruption or tectonic plate shift that could be super deep and that could cause turbulence and then generate swells, generate massive waves. And... um, For sure. And... uh, You need to deal with that happening, you know, that's the, mm-hmm. the, the chaotic, chaotic element that's always present. For sure. And you know, I think the what's ocean in- is not stable at all. The ocean is not stable. It is not stable. However, if you think about it as an entity or a part of the organism of the planet, if you were, it's been quite stable for yeah. quite a long time in terms of a part of the ecosystem uh, in doing what it does. But, For sure, I agree with you. But, but it, it, it's it's um, uh, a pola- polarity that's at play because it's also always shifting, right? The swell is is almost never predictable. And so mm-hmm. um, you know, there's mm-hmm. many ways to accurately read the ocean, but ultimately mm-hmm. you have to be there and read it, you know, on right. the spot and react to it as as it's moving. That's, As changes happen, yes. And if you can, if you can totally connect to it, like many um, big wave surfer jet ski drivers in a trance. I mean, that's yeah. I've never seen anything like that. It parallels kind of. I mean, someone could write a book about the parallels between them and like sh- shamanic 
leaders of communities throughout time, I would say, in terms of the ability to totally absorb oneself into their surroundings and tap into, you know, the greater, you know. Um, yeah, the greater. Yeah. And I think that those individuals that are, are able to tap into the greater, they're really remarkable human beings, man. They're like really, um, you know, they're the essence of great films and great books. And yeah. we should all admire those individuals for, for that, you know, that simple capacity, capability, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is flow. Mm -hmm. But it's also greater than flow. It's like sacred flow. It's like... Wow, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. And, uh, and I like, you know, the, the similarity with shamanism because, you know, these people that they, they go through a lot of suffering to get to that place. You know, they go through a lot of work and Definitely. it's not external work, it's internal work. Mm -hmm. It's not work that you can uh, go through on a multiplayer level. You have to go on a, you know, single player mm -hmm. um, work for for a long, a lot of time until you know that practice enables you to reach that space where you can enter that dimension and then mm -hmm. leave the ocean, go back to society, talk yes. about it get people hyped about it because the eternal you know, the return more exactly yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah Pe so th this is not something that just a few se selected individuals can do this is something that potentially anyone can tap into right and so i would agree with that and would you say this parallels the uh the hero's journey in some way the the mm -hmm. um process that one goes goes through in order to lose some sense of overly active identifying ego and to uh, go into chaos and to reemerge with a new sense maybe through through sacred flow and totally. uh, then to reassemble or to reemerge uh, as something hopefully more wise or Um, in the shamanic sense with um, with a strength to investigate uh, different mind spaces different possibly dimensions mm -hmm. maybe different mm -hmm. uh, realities and exactly. to and, and yeah. yeah yeah I was just gonna say that you mentioning strength mm. I think that's a that's a great um, you know, a great word for what we're trying to express here, because just the process of trying to go to enter sacred flow, just the process, first of all, the mental process, uh, finding out that there's such a thing as a sacred flow hmm. and making the internal decision that that's something you're interested in and maybe you want to go through some changes in your life so that you can get to experience sacred flow uh, just doing that it's you're already fighting a great internal battle and and then physically trying to you know drive to the nearest shore and getting to water that's mm. uh, in extreme extremely cold temperature mm. and then You know, swimming to the place where you can catch the wave mm. and then waiting five, ten, twenty waves until you get to that place mm. where you're in the exact right place at the right time. And then you get to catch the wave. Mm. You're gonna find a lot of suffering in that process. You're gonna find a lot of uh, falling down mm. and, you know, uh, grasping for air. And so you're obviously gonna you know, um, leave that place with a stronger mindset and a stronger body as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a whole lifestyle. Just, mm. 
just looking for things that make you feel feel stronger, not necessarily be stronger, but feel stronger. I think that's that's huge. Mm -hmm. And the process to the process to acquire strength in in that that um, in that way requires an acceptance of journeys to the underworld and those ex those whoa yes those are not easy decisions to make to accept the underworld as a place you would like to go many of us consider the underworld as a place to avoid chaos danger to avoid for the sure. unknown yeah these places it's a place you don't come back to as the same person also like there's yes. many parables where if you go to the underworld you're for sure not coming back in right. the same situation if you're coming back at all and there is a lot of you that doesn't want to change there's a large part of you that's invested yeah. in being exactly the same and not only is there potential fear of of danger or chaos or just of not knowing but there's mm -hmm. also i think resistance deep down at all times to change as such because totally because things are are apparently working out mm -hmm. everything is apparently safe and stable and so ego doesn't want to change any of that mm -hmm. right i don't think so i don't think so unless okay unless you have a massive part of yourself that is obsessed about identifying with always changing, maybe? Yep. Some sort of paradigm shift, some sort of experience that alters your mm -hmm. fundamental uh, mode of reading reality or understanding how things work. Mm -hmm. So maybe you tried surfing once and um, you, you almost die. And mm. there was this moment where you had to go all the way to the bottom of the ocean so that the wave would not run through you, mm. but over you. Have you ever uh, seen a wave from underneath the Ma ocean? Many, many times. Many, it's so many beautiful, times. isn't it? It's mm -hmm. like uh, the churning. a beautiful, intelligent pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the turning... The churning and, of the uh, Milky Ocean. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. You know, this is spirals are both in outer galaxies and inner waves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's and, it's, you know, it's uh, like, yeah. It's a it's a as above so below moment almost. It could be. Right, and the eternal return. It's the yeah. eternal up and down. Yeah. It's a perpetual motion machine. Can I make a, a conversational it. proposition? Please, yes. We discussed the idea of sacred flow. Mm -hmm. And I would like to try to tie that into creativity. Nice. In terms of, appro in terms of approach, do you think that there is a perspective of the idea say just thinking about the concept of sacred flow considering and there's a um together may we consider the proposition of approaching creative endeavors uh with the with the aim of incorporating uh, pr uh processes or practices to um try to get there in terms of in your creative pursuits Mm -hmm. um, I see it yeah. as as a an opening to incorporate more of the hero's journey into a reimagining of creative processes for yourself. Um, what do you think? Mm -hmm. First of all, I think that's a really interesting new wave. Thank you. And so I'm grateful that you brought it forward secondly you didn't have to say that thank you <laughs> <laughs> um you know creativity is a really mysterious thing for me and amen there's been times when 
I'm pretty certain that I understand what it's about, and then some other times where um, completely lost. Mm -hmm. And, you know, coming from the sacred flow conversation, um, it totally makes sense to shift into creativity because as we've talked about on previous episodes, there's, we both share an understanding, an understanding of creativity, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, where novelty is a really important part of the process, right? Mm -hmm. And thinking about, you know, the creative, the creative process having essentially having to do with novelty and the connection of seemingly independent ideas, uh, hmm. divergent thinking and all of that. Basically, sacred flow could be synonymous with the idea of creativity having a very close, close relationship with consciousness and the imagination part of consciousness, the, mm -hmm. the visual aspect of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And under this idea, I tend to think that if just like if anyone is able to access sacred flow, everyone is also able to access obviously in different levels, but still everyone is able to access uh, this, you know, what is it? Um, a, a more profound aspect of creativity, a more human aspect of creativity, mm. which doesn't have to do a lot with the aesthetics or the, or the har harmony of, of the aesthetics but more of like uh, the openness and the honesty mm. of what's being shared. Mm -hmm. I feel what like what you you're about that. Yeah, I totally I I'm on this riff. I'm riffing. I feel like the yeah, yeah. I feel like what you're talking about makes me think of the the openness of the soul in creativity mm -hmm. in the. Yes, yes in the the creative actors um, experience of the sacred in the process of creativity so not necessarily Beautiful. a discussion on the output or the creation but the mm -hmm. experiential process of the creator in that in that zone in that mode in sacred flow and the connection of your conscious awareness and uh, sensory um, felt set, your felt experience uh, mm -hmm. of the moment of being uh, perhaps in parallel or connecting to something that is essentially timeless or all expansing, all expansing, all expansive in its nature. Yeah. Um, that sounds very nice. Yeah, it sounds. <laughs> it it sounds too good to be true, almost. Yeah. Have you it been there? It sounds like something I re. I'm not sure. Mm. I I could say I I have been on this exploration for a long time, trying to find my own personal spiritual path to mm. creativity. Uh, or conscious creativity. Well, there's there's many um, ways to to name this idea, and mm -hmm. people have tried it. There's there's books on it, I'm sure, but uh, I haven't found anything or anyone's testimony that really makes me think. Okay, this is true. This is mm -hmm. not not just a pursuit, but a an actual mode of living that mm -hmm. really, really works. Because I'm also, mm -hmm. uh, well, on one side, I'm, I'm really against the 
expressions of creativity and art that are, uh, you know, what's the right word? Um, relativist in nature, mm. that are provocative in its conceptual nature. Mm. Um, I've always been attracted to what what you just said, you know, the, the art that is trying to express the soul and trying to be... Mm. Uh, radically honest about mm. what's happening in the soul and and that's the only way i found to to understand really dark art mm. or art that has to do with depression or some mm. sort of um, horror mood mm -hmm. uh, which i've always found horrible to mm -hmm. be honest i've always f <laughs> found art that that comes from negative spaces, not really, um, well, I'm, I'm, I just realized I'm generalizing mm. in a ver very, very uh, dangerous way, way. but uh, I've always had trouble understanding where dark art comes from. Mm -hmm. um, not, not necessarily, you know, the utility of it, because I, you know, if if whenever I'm going through a hard time, that's mm -hmm. when I most feel like I need to create something and pour that that feeling, even if it's a really negative feeling, into some sort of expression, right? And so I understand why um, people create art that's coming from, you know, deep depression or or deep anger. Well, there's still or a sense of truth. Suicidal thoughts, right? There's still there's, a sense of right, truth. There. Exactly. It is. That's and that's right. But what I what I find trouble um, doing is it's enjoying the consumption of that that those results. Right. Uh, I do enjoy the consumption of artists that are trying to express uh, beautiful things and really positive things and mm. things that have to do with light and and mm. uh, things that are more in the light rather than mm. the darkness. But uh, uh, in in a in a different way to understand this, I'm thinking right now. I'm thinking more as a as a consumer of art, but thinking about the creator, I do think it's it's the mission of the artist to dive into those deep dark places and come come out of there with you know something to share. Mm -hmm. I think at the core, I think at the core. There is a there is a sense of revelation almost in uh, what I would I guess consider to be great art, and that's an opinion. That's you know it's a value judgment, but I mm -hmm. think there's a sense of rev revelation, and that revelation is almost that novelty. That revelation is yeah. it's a, a a good piece of art is a new idea, and it doesn't it's not a sentence, it's not language, it's not words, but it's a revelation and novelty and I believe should reflect in some way a truth or a way of expressing something that's real and true and there's and so I I agree I, I tend to have an aversion towards something that's created for the purpose of deconstructing or making commentary or or representing sort of a thesis that's been determined beforehand mm -hmm conceptually in language it's like okay well you're a, you're representing an idea that's already been articulated in words and then you're 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 kind of adding imagery to that and to me it's like okay well you know that's kind of supporting an argument possibly but this but as a standalone thing it it it's not it doesn't hold water without your your thesis about it or your you're mm -hmm. like yeah, yeah. it's like a, it's like an addition it's an addition to a theory or an addition to you know the point when i think mm -hmm. something that's true standalone piece of art that's inspirational to me whether it's a reflection of um of a truth that's a a positive revelationary truth or a negative uh deep um truth that's that comes from a space of of true investigation and and expression that those 
creations yeah. are are standalone novel um, um, <laughs> phenomena. <laughs> Then this just made me think about, well, I'm going to go ahead and try to define what a true artist is and cast a value judgment on what a true artist could potentially be under my current understanding of the situation. But um, I'm going to dare to say that a true artist uh, differentiates from the intellectuals and, and conceptual artists by discovering a part of himself that he that he was struggling to discover and then finding a way to express that with uh, the least amount of filters possible and mm. uh, and I guess you well, know, I would say the fil- completely. Yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say the filters might just be that the the creative medium. And right, no, exactly, and no more. Exactly. And no more. Uh, and or no more than is necessary. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Don't make it about like uh, making it fancy, but mm-hmm. making it raw. And mm-hmm. so, or or even not worrying about making it beautiful, but making mm. it honest. So I guess what I'm saying is um, you may get lost in in trying to find novelty in your work and trying to do work that's never done before. And that's really, really hard. You know, new mm. ideas, uh, really new ideas are hard. Um, I'm, maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe we can get into if there's such a thing as new ideas, but I guess what I'm trying to say is if you find an idea that's completely yours, even if it's if it's uh, been thought before by by someone else, if you arrive to that idea from your own personal experience and your own process, it's unique to you. And so, because you are unique, your idea is new and novel. Mm. And that's honest. I guess that's honesty. That's uh, it, that that deals with novelty as well, because mm. you know there's never been anyone like you, ever. Mm. That's that's I I think. At where that moment, with those influences, with that connection exactly. to uh, raw yeah. honesty and yeah, exploration, yeah, yeah. that's so the beauty. Any artist that's trying to emulate someone else is is doing a fatal fatal strategy error. Like right from the conception of your own creative path, if you're if you're working from emulation or repetition from mm. a, what anyone else is doing, mm-hmm. I feel like you're that's that's a that's a strategy error because what you should be doing is what only you want to do, only mm. you can do, and if you don't know what that is, you should be spending time trying to discover what that is. You know, I will say that I think an error, maybe through trying to to emulate someone else, maybe, but mm. I don't think that's, you know, maybe by by trying to copy someone else, you arrive at your own style. Or mm-hmm. I yeah, don't sh- even know if the style is the right word, but I should guess. we consider the potential of of repetition or emulation um, for getting more familiar with the with um perhaps a unconscious understanding of maybe what that creator that you are valuing was tapping into or connecting to and hopefully in that process mm-hmm. informing your own journey in some way because we can't get away from influences yeah. it's impossible but that's right i agree but um but you can try I mean, you can try to get away from influences. You can try. Maybe that's maybe that's a path mm-hmm. worth exploring. And perhaps this is a segue we don't want to go down, but I'm just considering the idea of sacred flow and the connection of creativity and art historically with uh, religious institutions or religious endeavors or or with metaphysical ideals, and that that connection. Mm-hmm where something is so highly valued throughout the process 
might have a play a role in the in the um, intensity by which someone is is uh, is investigating the unknown. It, it's mm-hmm. it sort of it sort of ramps up the the um, the poignancy of the whole endeavor and in some way yeah. has created such um, such beautiful pieces of art that you would say you know it's not necessary but there's something about the sacred about the about the um, the acknowledgement that the process you're in is important mm-hmm. and and very mm-hmm. very meaningful and very very that it's a um almost that there can be a duty it's a, there's a, a a serving element of this unbelievable um not right. pressure yeah. but like you're involved in this unbelievably deep and meaningful value metaphysical value hierarchy that 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 um that can that seems mm-hmm, to potentially totally. serve as a, as a as a rocket ship towards orienting you into uh your navigation with with the unknown in in expressive yeah. pursuits mm-hmm. so i'm contemplating two different aspects to this um religion new shift so First of all, it doesn't also have to be religious. Think, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New wave. No, and I agree. I agree that it's it's the same wave now, mm-hmm. and just a different approach. And mm. there's a big, I think, there's a big relationship between um, the sacred or the religious, the spiritual, the mm. metaphysical, yes, the unknown between what's novel, because novelty has to do with things that are uncovered, that are mm. not normal, that are not obvious. Right. And so... Is it paranormal, um, should we say? We could, for sure. But is it safe to say as well that all religious or spiritual traditions are infiltrated by art? <laughs> infiltrated is not at all the right word, but imbued by or... Um, Undercover filled with. <laughs> filled filled with art, right? Like yeah, and paint brushes with silence. The personality, the personality of the mystical seeker, yes, is very close to the personality of the creator. Yes, like uh, both of them want to be close to God or closer to to um, well. If we replace God with creator then being an artist is just trying to be like god and and, and you, can re- you can you can replace god with narcissistic mm, <laughs> but, you can re- yeah. you can replace god with the everything or or the all or or the mm-hmm. the symbiotic mm. beautiful organism of history and the planet and the cosmos um, but but well then we're getting into how to define god Right. Okay, sure. Um, but what I'm but, saying but I guess, is... I guess we can say both and. I'm both saying, the creator and the whole creation. Sure. I'm saying the utility of our discussion in relation to creating art with a influence of your connection to something greater than yourself, the definition of mm-hmm. that utility can be wide-ranging. And so I'm discussing this only to the point of saying that the utility of this conception will result in the sort of experiences and art that we're talking about and yeah. not necessarily attempting to wade into the my own or my conceptual definition of what God is or could be. Um, yeah, I agree. Mm. I agree. And, and also that made me think of beauty because I think beauty is something that... Um, is very related to an idea of God, mm. and mm-hmm. um, and I I think that whenever an artist is trying to create create beauty mm-hmm. or or make something beautiful, mm-hmm. um, first of all, it's really really hard to make something beautiful, and 
other than that, you don't really know if other people are going to find it beautiful. All you know is whatever current programming of beauty and harmony you're accustomed to. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know, I, I really feel there's both a very cultural aspect to beauty that we learn from, from experience culturally. Mm -hmm. But there's a very mystical aspect of beauty, like uh, the beauty that's that's on a beautiful sunset or mm -hmm. or a, I don't know a landscape. Nature too, uh, symmetry. Nature, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Design. There's yeah. beautiful design in flowers and fruits and yes, and it's really. I mean, just watching. I was watching some pictures of. Uh, you know, fractal, fractal, I don't know what the right word for it is, but mm -hmm. fractation in nature. And mm. so, yeah, so trees, it, 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 cool. yeah. right, trees, mm. lungs, yeah. uh, you know, your, your lungs and thunder. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was a picture that had like six different uh, elements mm. or the Fibonacci uh, spiral in uh, yeah. pine cones. Exactly, exactly. That's another one. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. And, yeah. That's... And if you, you, notice, you notice that these beautiful patterns are both inside you and outside of you. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's, that's really something. Like watching pictures of galaxies and then watching macro close-up close pictures of eyes, yes. of the iris. That's the as above, so below, I believe. That's... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. some people might say that's just a really crazy coincidence. But, right. But who knows? You know, it's just some, mm -hmm. some of these patterns are really jaw-dropping in their beauty. They're and wild. So I guess if you, if you have the sensitivity to appreciate a beautiful sunset. Mm -hmm. It's both beauties in the eyes of the beholder, but it's the, there's also a sense of an intelligent design. Uh, higher, mm -hmm. higher, maybe being is not the right word, but a mm. higher intelligence or cr creator force that's really, really similar to us, but it, uh, also really, really different from us because it's not us it's a creator of reality but I'm, I'm, again i'm a i'm speaking from a dazed perspective right and so yeah it's so it's also thinking. it also is 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 uh, patterns that have emerged through similar processes due to the laws of physics that result in these patterns and these these um these one could say pragmatically true um repetitive mm -hmm. shapes that benefit that have benefit uh and um yeah and uh that doesn't necessarily need to have been um chosen by some sort of higher power but the 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 idea that these patterns are reflected in in the macrocosm and the microcosm is crazy it's unbelievable it's unbelievable that 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 these things are are so everywhere that that the Fibonacci sequence or the the spiral can be seen in galaxies and in hurricanes and in pine cones. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Like it's too much. <laughs> that, that doesn't. What is it's that? It's too you know? perfect. What it's, is? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so uh, that that's always been my idea behind not ever buying into atheism. Uh, I, a few years ago, I was uh, very curious about understanding how atheists uh, think and how they argue for their belief. Uh, but just I wouldn't simple... say that there's a collective called atheists that have the same opinion. First of all, to make to not totally, make a strong man. <laughs> totally, yeah, I'm making a big <laughs> generalization. Yes, and a uh, very dangerous claim towards what people think, uh, but. I, the thing I always thought is, uh, since I'm a nature lover 
and I'm always kind of lost in the details of clouds and trees and and horizon and etc. Right? I feel like I've always had this thought that it's way riskier to say, "Oh, there's no intelligence behind it," uh, than to than to you know uh, bet for there's intelligence behind it. Does that make sense? Like I I I, I feel like um, it takes way more faith to be like, oh, there's nothing, there's no creator, than to say, um, well, there's probably some intelligence behind it because some of these things are too crazy and too far yeah. connected. And so I've always felt like it's way more of a stretch to be like, oh, there's nothing than to like, there's way more indications that there's something that's intelligent behind it. That I think. Yes, I would say I, I would say that I disagree. I would say that mm -hmm. that it's way more of a stretch to to have faith about the patterns that we see and the and the uh, harmony in the macrocosm and microcosm okay. as developed over time through due to the same laws of physics everywhere and due to evolution that resulted in these patterns. However, I wouldn't agree that to not have faith is the answer. And that's what I find most interesting about conceptually how I've thought in recent times. But I do think that it's, okay. that it's quite incredible and it, it totally is explanatory to consider that, that, that if you have evolution that slowly conserves patterns that result in in success reproductive success the passing on of the genes then over time you'll see similar similar uh these similar patterns emerge and be conserved and that that conservation of of those patterns are what becomes valued because they have been okay. conserved for so long including what beauty and pattern and symmetry those are evolutionarily conserved genes uh that that have um pervasively uh, emerged all around the planet and that's that can be conceptualized in that way and be beautiful without the need for considering someone designing it because we the history is is there to read in the process itself and the unfolding of it mm -hmm. due to uh, the limitations of physics that will channel something towards what we see and can be okay. explained that way. However, mm. the massiveness yep. of the harmony between microcosm, macrocosm, and the fact that the fact that the laws of physics result in something that feels so beautiful and to discount that as simply you know, billiard, bar, billiard ball model feels, mm -hmm. and maybe it's just mm -hmm. a feeling, but feels, uh, feels like half of the story. Um, and that's what I'm mm -hmm. interested in is that feeling and that call to right. something larger. Um, so that's, my, that's still, my piece on that. Yeah, yeah. So, so let me try to dive a little bit deeper. Uh, that feeling of, you know, it's half of the story, you know, there's got to be a little more than that. Uh, you know, pure mm, scientific materialism, understanding of the world, right? Mm -hmm. um, is that not the same as, I mean, you start, you ended up in that and you started that, that little comment there, that comment, <laughs> you, you started by saying that you don't agree with, um, you know, disregarding a creator as, as something that, that, you know, takes a lot more faith and a lot more risk mm -hmm. in that, in that proposition. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I want to, I want to ask you why, uh, but I want to, I want to ask you why just quickly mentioning that where I'm coming from saying that there's, there's, uh, I find that there's more, it's, it's safer in in argument uh, terms to propose uh, a creator than to deny it 
because of the, I don't know, something like the law of causality. You know, everything that we can observe has some sort of momentum that's carrying behind it, some, some um, effect that created that cause. I'm sorry, the other way, some cause that cre created the effect. And so if that's, if that's a law that is unbreakable in this, in this reality, then what makes you think that there's not a causality behind the whole reality? Okay, so now the wave has shifted from the emergence of beauty in nature to a full-on discussion on the existence of God. I guess so. We can go uh, there. That's another we, way. We can that, go there, but I mean, we, we have already way. mentioned it. And so I feel like it's now we like we're kind of. Um, yeah, I mean, we're here now. I feel like we're here now. Yeah. I would like to carry and, and the, I'm, I would like to carry the wave on because there's a lot of about, things yeah. that needs to that needs to be touched on. But I think that. In, in order for something to be a larger leap of faith, it needs to be something that is harder to, that is harder. The thing, the thing about accepting how we got here in a purely phys, in a, in a purely evolutionary and physics model or purely reductionist scientific model, the, the beauty about at least, at least the give us one free miracle and we'll explain the rest. The explain the rest is the, is the, miracle of science that says we don't need any other explanation to get here from say the big bang in some sense i mean there's a lot of holes but it's unbelievably overwhelming how we can explain potentially how we got here from that starting point i think that starting point is the miracle in the mm. give us one free miracle and we'll explain the rest but i feel like science has so many unanswered uh, aspects I agree, but you yeah. can explain how we got here using physics that, that does function and work and generate technology and has proven itself to be quite accurate in terms of representing the real world. And, and but it you can't does, explain, it does, explain causality. No, it, that's, that's the free they, miracle. They haven't done that, right? That's the free mm -hmm, miracle, yeah. that, and we'll explain the rest. That's that part that I'm granting, and that begs many questions. But... From, right. a, from a pure yeah. from a pure statement of it makes more sense and takes a less a, a smaller leap of faith to believe in a creator I think that that's a hundred percent incorrect when you don't need that to explain other than the free miracle you can explain everything else you can and that's the amazing that's the that's the wild thing that Do human it, intellect yeah. has developed okay. that for that purpose but I think if you're trying to to uh, theorize or bring forth some ideas in attempts to answer really difficult and exist existential questions. Um, if you're trying to figure out the causality question and then, and then you say something like, well, science can't figure that out, but it can figure out everything after that. And so that's, isn't that uh, wave hopping, wave shifting? Because we're not talking about everything after that, I'm sure. Uh, like, I'm not, I'm not arguing against science we're, being able to explain anything. Weren't we talking, uh, we're talking about, about the structures of beauty and the patterns in nature? Mm -hmm, that can, that mm -hmm. can and be, if we're talking about... That can be explained by, by science only in physics. Yeah, but we were coming... We, well, I was coming from the idea of sacred flow and mm -hmm. and then we arrived at you know talking about god because we're we're talking about i don't know beauty and and things that have to do with um you know finding um what is the the right way to sum it up i don't know finding uh a different approach to creativity Yes, uh, I guess we, we were riffing on that, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, if there's such a thing as sacred flow, then we're talking about this, you know, things that... <laughs> I'm, doubt I'm now doubting what I'm about to say. I, 
I was going to say we we're thinking about uh, proposing ideas that science doesn't necessarily touch on. Uh, and if, if we, if we talk about reality and the nature of reality, then I find it a little necessary to talk about uh, the causality of reality and the relationship to God and what we find sacred. And, uh, you know, sacredness is not necessarily related to an idea of a, a creator, I guess, but it's just, I don't know, for me, it's just really interesting to, to, to imagine the artist also as in service to God or as some sort of religious seeker. And sure. And I think that that's yeah, value. That's, yeah. that's a, a hierarchy of, of metaphysical ideals. And I think that throughout, um, I think many, many, many cultures throughout history had mm -hmm. a connection to the sacred that didn't necessarily have the same models of creator or of the same uh, structures based around their interaction to a sacred And so mm -hmm. I think that it's that it's uh, totally possible to be absorbed in the sacred and the grandeur of and the and the magnificence of everything mm -hmm. without necessarily needing to subscribe to a uh, cultural um, or uh, designed or ideological framework that is built on top of that phenomena of the sacred. Um, okay, okay. This is really interesting, and, and uh, I would love to explore this in, a different, in another episode because... 100%. Uh, you, just, you just said, you know, maybe you don't need to subscribe to any cultural interpretation of a deity or... or a religious experience or or and um, someone else's idea of whatever create think or or energy created this reality right mm -hmm. but if you're re regarding the idea of a create if you're disregarding or rejecting the idea of a creator you're also subscribing to someone else's idea right i mean who who Um, how can I put this? Since no one knows whether there's a creator or not, in both instances, you're subscribing to an idea that you're not sure of. Um, that's if you accept that everyone is conceptualizing that question to have. It may be for some people that the origin okay. or conceptualization of the history of the world or of what we live in or where we are, that question isn't there, in which case you wouldn't be subscribing to anyone's idea of whether there is or isn't, but you would be living within a framework that doesn't include that question. Hmm, interesting. Is that not a, not a play of words? It's not a play. It's not a play of words. <laughs> it's not a play of words. I wouldn't say that we are in a. We are definitely in a in cultures and people who are aware of that question, and you would be. But you are also. I mean, undecided is is uh, where do you see undecided? Right. Yeah, I think that's wisest to say. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so maybe being an agnostic is is wiser, but I'm well, not that's sure though a whole because that's, that, a whole that's the whole point. The whole the whole point is just trying trying to articulate ideas and put forward theories right. about the nature of reality that science doesn't get to. Right, and there's many many at there least are many, proposing. There are many functional questions that surround the existence of a higher power or something greater than 
And in different contexts, I find the utility or the importance of that to come to a result in a different answer for me in terms of what feels more right or what feels um, more pragmatically, mm -hmm. pragmatic, pragmatically useful. But in terms of, mm -hmm. in terms of explaining the patterns and beauty in nature, I think I'm so happy to, to lay that at the feet of what we've uncovered through the scientific method. However, that doesn't, that's yeah. not my answer yeah, yeah, on the, sure. on the subject as a whole. And I think that that's, that, uh, I'm totally, totally interested in, uh, exploring this, this, these, the waves that will 100%. result from this convo. Um, and, uh, just to bring it back to, to the creativity aspect of it. Yes. Sir. Um, I've always thought that if beauty is in the eye of the beholder, there's gotta be some aspect to human creativity that's not from this earth. That's not necessarily na natural or organic to the animal kingdom. And I think that the fact that we are able to, um, I don't know, like watch a beautiful sunset completely lost in the moment and filled with awe. There is a feeling there that's, and I know this is a, a, a claim, this is a, just my opinion, but it sometimes it feels, it feels like it's a little bit more than human. It feels sacred or it feels um, religious or spiritual. And those are words that I think we, we use to name things that are not just human, but a little weirder, a little harder to understand from what we commonly experience as human beings. And so just the reason that we have words for those things, the, that, I mean, that's a great thing to, to explore. Mm -hmm. And I think we could connect that to our discussions on, um, on uh, archetypes and perhaps on the yes, true. on the uh, impact of imagery that feels eternal in its conceptualization in our uh, our mm -hmm. sort of uh, archetypal frameworks that perhaps could be a part of a collective unconscious of some kind and that might totally. result in the feelings of of something being more sacred possibly possibly uh, that's yeah. where my head goes with that <laughs> yes, um, so take a, so takeaways. Uh, I like considering the idea of different types of flow. That's interesting to me. Um, and, okay. and ways of approaching creativity and of art and your own creative pursuits with an I with sort of a, with the idea of hero's journey in the background or some sort of um, underworld and reemergence Phoenix type experience. That's interesting. Um, mm -hmm. totally. And, uh, yeah, that's, I think that's yeah. my main takeaway. I always enjoy exploring creativity and, you know, trying to relate it to the idea of the sacred. And so this mm -hmm. has just been a playground for me and mm -hmm. I have really enjoyed this convo. Um, we, we got a little bit into, into talking about God, which, uh, felt at the time felt like a like a weird segue uh, distraction from mm. current wave but i'm really curious to mm -hmm. you know, explore maybe continue this combo on 21 mm -hmm. they say that's a whole can of worms but i would say that's a whole can of waves if, if you know it what it is a whole can of waves um speaking of there's waves, a lot of wave uh, potential there Speaking of waves, um, you know, when, uh, when everything settles down with, uh, with COVID, uh, let's, let's get out there and, and uh, let's, let's catch some, uh, catch some big waves and, and go out surfing. I'd really like that big wave, you know, get out there. It's been a while since we've been out there together and, uh, that would be super rad. It will. Yeah. And hopefully it's not too far away in time and maybe we can do some free diving, you know, get, Get to that 20 meter mark, 30 mm -hmm. meter mark, go deep. Right on. 
Well, thanks for the convo, <laughs> brother. All right. Likewise. See you Peace. in the next one. Peace.